Okay. Um, we are interviewing Kathy Sakahara, and uh, she's going to tell us more about even year elections. Kathy? Uh, thank you, Ethan. And actually, I did ask uh, Jasmine Smith to, jo to join us. Um, I promised Ethan I will get someone there. So I put my name in the spot. Um, but I'm actually hoping Jasmine will, will carry um, a lot. I'm I like to speak up, and so I have to practice um, stepping back and listening. And uh, Jasmine will do a great job. But I will. I'll just start out very, very briefly. Um, this is a um, something that passed the county council by seven to two, and it would specifically move county elect only countywide elections or county elections um, from odd years where they are now in King County to even years. Um, the primary rationale behind this is that voter turnout is bigger um, in in even years, as you probably all know, uh, having I Bet you've all done lots of get out the vote and you know how frustrating it is going door to door in an odd year and people say election I just voted last year what are you talking about. Um, and more importantly, I th or in addition to uh, the size of the electorate it's also the diversity of the electorate is much closer in an even year still not close but closer um, to reflecting our population um, as a whole. So those are our motivations. The uh, seven people on the county council who identify as Democrats um, voted for it. The two who identify as Republicans voted against it. And um, I don't think we have it on our materials yet, but the King County uh, Central Committee of the Democratic Party just endorsed this um, last week uh, as, as, as well as other organizations. I know Jasmine can tell you about. Jasmine, do you want to kind of provide a, a greater in-depth perspective? Yeah, um, uh, I guess to back things up a little bit, my name's Jasmine, I use she, her pronouns, and I've got my Washington bus hat on, specifically at edu the education fund. But we've also done some work within the legislative session this last year, supporting even years, especially after this last um, election in Seattle, and really seeing a motivation, a push behind having a more representative democracy where the electorate matches um, the people who are turning out and making it as easy as possible for folks to vote in every way. That's why we're backing so many different election reforms. And why we're really excited about even years is it has the benefit that it doesn't change a whole lot just moves it over to a different year um where it's happening um and will have a huge impact in terms of who's showing up to those uh polls and who's showing up to turn out uh their ballot as much as we'd like everyone to vote in every single election you can totally understand the uh fatigue with i think it was like seven ballots i've gotten in the last uh few years um it's really hard to track and making sure that we're putting the most important uh, races in front of uh, folks uh, when they're there. Um, I guess I don't necessarily have anything further, just that it's been really exciting working in coalition with a lot of really great organizations that have been doing the work for years in different uh, for different policies and different spaces on having a representative democracy. and. Uh, we're really excited that uh, King County Council was moved to uh, get this on the ballot. Um, can open it up for further questions. Yeah, Jasmine, sorry I didn't put you on the recording, but I'm going to say this. Jasmine Smith of Even Your Elections is talking with us as well. So um, let's let's open it up for questions. Who would like to go first? Yeah, Jeremy, go ahead. Um, just want to ask um, probably the most frequent uh, downside that all that I've heard presented on e on even your elections is um, I guess increased fall off towards the end of the ballot where people don't vote all the way to the end and and um, higher advertising costs. Are you do you have any data on like are these phenomena real or um, or I guess anything about like what's happened when other jurisdictions have switched over? 
Oh, Kathy, you're muted. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, we do, as a matter of fact, and um, it is true there is some drop off from the top of the ballot to the bottom of the ballot. So in an even year, you might say, well, less people will vote on, say, county council than on president. And that's probably true. However, it's less people out of a much bigger universe. So the total number of people that vote at the very bottom of an even year ballot is greater than the number of people who vote at the top of an odd year ballot, even the greater num greater than the number of people who even turn out. So why it's not 100% of the voters, it's um, a certain percentage of a much larger uh, group of voters. Um, Dr. Uh, Zoli Hanjal, I often uh, get his, his name wrong, um, has done a tremendous amount of research on this, and he did testify to the county council and also provided written testimony. And he said that the overall, that the um, fall off is, um, is pretty minor between top of the ballot and bottom of the ballot. So bottom line is we're very confident based on ballot trends and, and what we've seen in the past is that even if there is some fall off, we'll still have more people voting on county uh, council races. Um, the cost of advertising itself won't really change. Um, I will be be candid. There is one cost that that one county council member raised uh, with us, which is right now when someone runs for county council, they typically reach out to only four of four voters. That is voters who the, the steady, solid, predictable voters who vote every year. With this change, they will reach out to two of four voters. That's a bigger number. And the concern is we'll have to talk to more voters. The benefit of this policy is they will be talking to more voters, right? Right now, the people um, who are disproportionately young, renters, low income, and people of color, oh, one minute, I'm sorry, um, are, are not hearing from candidates in odd years because they don't have that voting track record and so they don't get mail. Sorry, I forgot about your one minute timer. I'm not good and at I that, Ethan. Forgot if we had told you about it, so I, I, mean, could, I, I did, but it went right out of my head. <laughs> to be fairer, that was I, kind I'm, of I'm two so questions. Sorry. It's yeah. Oh. well, yeah. If there was two questions, maybe you got two minutes on that yeah. somehow. But anyway, okay. uh, uh, okay. Alice, you go ahead. Okay. Um, I this just mostly a logistical question. Will there still be? special elections. I'm thinking about like school levy elections and stuff that happen in, in, in wonky parts of the calendar, like February and April. Will they happen at those? Or will they be allowed to happen? Well, I guess it's a county. It's only for those elected election. official positions, not for okay. levies and whatnot. And that kind of avoids some of the issues that were coming up in the legislature. Um, and some of those issues, it was just, uh, it only applies to specific uh, county level elected official races. Thanks for clarifying. Uh, Sarah. Just more of a technical question, assuming this passes, when would it take effect? And then what's the plan to communicate to voters that these races are now on even year ballots? Um, in terms of the time frame for the change, then if it ra is ratified in the autumn, then it would the transition would happen in 2023. And so candidates running in the even districts, two, four, six, and eight, and the elections director would have three year terms instead of four year terms. And then in uh, 2025, the executive assessor and districts one, three, five, and seven, and nine would be elected to three year terms instead of four year terms, which would result in them next being contested in an even year, 2028. And that three-year term is just a one time to, mm -hmm. to switch over. Um, in yeah. terms of the, I would say the plan for communicating this to the public, well, technically that is up to the elections director. And so the ordinance itself does not address that issue. Um, but it is clear then that the elections director um, 
would 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 have that responsibility, as well as many of our ally organizations. I'm sure the bus will want to make sure that you know young people, college students um, are aware of this. The League of Women Voters will be very uh, involved in communicating. Um, the you know uh, Urban League and various uh, communities of color will be communicating to their folks. Um, but frankly, what I have find, found, I've talked to a lot of people who are not super political, but do vote every year. They're the, the privileged, you know, white upper income folks who vote every year. I asked them, when when is county council up on, on election? Ten and nobody years. knew. I mean, it's just like, I vote for whatever on the ballot. I look at I look at the ballot. I look at the voters pamphlet statement. So I think voters may not necessarily know it's a change, but of course they will know it's on their ballot. Great, thank you, uh, Jeremy. So I've already spoke. Does anybody else want to jump ahead of me for a question? No, I just wanted to okay. clarify. It looks like it wouldn't take effect until 2026. Is that correct? Or would it be next year in 2023? In a sense, with the election, then it would take effect. The, um, there's the transition period that starts with the next election of those terms in 2023 so that they'll have that shorter transition period. But then um, the first um, even year election would be in 2028. Okay, thanks so much. Um, okay, other question I had. Um, um, I know that, um, so even if we move county council elections to odd or to even years, obviously in the 36th, uh, the city of Seattle elections are still odd years. But what happens in, uh, like, say, unincorporated King County or um, where not everybody, where there may be no elections on the odd year ballot, except possibly initiatives and referenda? Do we know what happens, like, sort, sort of uh, in those elections, um, just in terms of turnout? Like, do people still turn out for initiatives and referenda? in um, places where there's no election otherwise that's a good point well but i typically there will be other elections there will be school board i think just about everyone votes in a school board election um and there will be things like hospital boards and fire district boards and other kinds of uh local jurisdictions um almost i think all of which are are in odd years so those would still happen I don't believe, but honestly, I don't, I can't swear to the fact that there would be nobody who had a candidate, that there'd be nobody who didn't have a candidate on their ballot. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that that would still be true based on what I've heard from the uh, elections director. Jasmine, do you have more thoughts on that? I don't, um, at the top of my head. I know my family is in unincorporated Snohomish County and um, they have like water district and uh, all of those uh, fun ones during uh, the even year, or I mean in the odd years, but they don't know, they don't vote on like mayor and whatnot in the odd years. I, I will point out that King is one of only three districts in the state that holds its county elections in odd years. So throughout the state, county elections are in even years. So this, that, that's more the standard. We have time for maybe one more question if anybody has. Uh, Clayton, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I, I just wanted to thank you both for doing this because it begins to address a fundamental driver of right-wing politics in the United States, which is the, uh, how to say, the the crazy number of jurisdictions um, that we have governing us and the way in which they are not coordinated. Uh, that I'm reminded of the fact that there is one unicameral legislature in the United States, Nebraska, which came into being in 1931 as Wait, a consequence you, of- you have a, Sorry, So, um, I don't have a question. 
I'm just giving thanks because um, this is really, really important. Well, we appreciate it. Um, Sherry, uh, we, do you have a very quick question and then we've got to we kind of go cut things. Is there, is there any opposition to this? measure and if so uh what it's um the opposition do, do mind jazz but if i take this because this point, there's no organized opposition at all reagan dunn was against it in that king county vote but other, there's not been any organized campaign against right it. he spoke against it and we do know there will be nobody has submitted a, a statement to the voters pamphlet so the king county voters pamphlet will have just say no statement was submitted. So there is basically no no opposition. J Jasmine's right. Okay, well, we'd like to thank you both for coming. I'm going to take us off record. And